Hey Armorsmith users, in this video I'm going to cover all the functionality that's currently available inside of Armorsmith Designer. Let's go ahead and start with some of the UI changes. One of the big ones is that now all the windows are dockable and you can kind of create your own custom interface uh, as you'd like to use the program. For example, I can take uh, this workspaces window, undock it, and then dock it to other areas on the screen. So it allows you to really customize uh, Armorsmith to exactly how you'd like to use it. Or if you have multiple monitors, you can move those windows off to, to other monitors. You can really create a custom setup that best fits your workflow. Okay, so the next thing is I've moved over to having a costume and workspace tab. Uh, the costume tab shows you your avatar and the costume that uh, you build on top of it. And then the workspace tab is where you go to edit your unfolds, um, do your patterns, and uh, the 3D model that's associated with that. Uh, up here in the workspaces window, uh, this is where it displays all the current workspaces that you have loaded. Essentially, each costume part you bring in, uh, I now call a workspace. The next window is the tool information window. So uh, depending on what tool you have active, for example, uh, the translate or rotate tool, uh, it'll display information in here about uh, what's currently going on, like the position or the rotation or like the current scale of uh, the object that you're working with. Down here is the property grid. So whatever is currently selected, uh, it shows you all the available properties that you can modify on that object. Okay, let's move on to the avatar. So over here is the overall height of the avatar, which you can kind of adjust. Uh, now, the overall height, I think, is confusing to some users. The idea behind it is more to set a general scale for your avatar. So really, you only want to set this once uh, at the beginning of editing the avatar. And then from there on out, you just want to be modifying uh, all the different parts on the avatar. Um, so I hope that makes sense. But like, for example, right now, he's 1.8 meters. So of course, if you change, uh, for example, the, the length of the legs, he's going to shrink and he's no longer going to be 1.8 meters. Um, but if you're adjusting all your body parts and you get everything measured up to how you actually are, then it should line back up to the 1.8 meters. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'll show you how you can modify uh, the existing measurements. Um, so you just click on the, the little widget here and you just drag it and it displays kind of the changes of the measurement. And when you let go, the, uh, the limb will pop to that size. You can also modify the circumferences of limbs. So just adjust that to make it uh, as, as wide or as, as skinny as you need to, to kind of match up to your proportions. This, of course, is kind of a cartoony character, but you can really get a, a wide breadth of um, customizability uh, with this avatar. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and, and reset this now, which you can do by going up to Avatar and New. Now he's back to the original shape. The other thing you can do with the avatar, uh, once you're finished editing it, uh, you can save it. Um, you can also uh, export it as an OBJ or STL. Uh, this is useful if you're building a 3D model and you want to have your avatar available uh, within that modeling program. And then you can also import custom meshes. Uh, the idea for this is that if you've had a, say, a body scan done, they can bring in that, that body scan and um, have really a, a perfect duplication of yourself for attaching costume parts to. Okay, so now I'm going to go over some of the camera controls. So uh, for the keyboard, if you hold down control and then use the up down arrows, you can zoom in and out. If you hold down alt, and use the arrow keys. You can rotate around or up and down the avatar. If you're using the mouse, uh, I've set up two control styles uh, because people kind of have a preference between one of the two. Uh, the first one is if you hold down the right mouse button, you can rotate around. Or alternatively, uh, you can hold down Alt and the middle mouse button and rotate around. 
the mouse wheel zooms you in and out. Uh, there's a few shortcuts under view for zooming all, or if you have something selected, you can zoom that selected object. Uh, you can also achieve this by double clicking on something. And if you double click off, then it zooms back out again. Okay, so let's move on to the workspaces. Um, the idea of a workspace is essentially a costume part that you're then going to attach to your avatar. So why don't we go ahead and import one. So now I've imported uh, this COD piece. Um, in order to attach it to your avatar, you want to click Attach Costume Part. And then all of these orange gears are different points that you can attach to. And it will kind of snap to them uh, when you get close. So I'm going to move it right here. And then we'll kind of rotate around and see how that is. That's actually a pretty good fit for, for right off the bat, but I'm going to move it down just a little bit. So in order to move parts around, uh, what you want to do is click on it, and then you can hit the T key, or you can hit the little move arrows over here, or alternatively, right click and translate part. So once the translate tool is active, you can click on one of these three buttons to move it around. So this one's sticking up in the air. I'll click to move them down a little bit. And maybe I'll just shift it. Uh, no, that's pretty good. So we'll leave that right there. Um, another thing you can do is rotation, which is R is the keyboard shortcut to switch to the rotate tool, or alternatively, the rotate button up here on the toolbar. And with that, you can move, rotate the costume part around. Um, we don't really need to do it for this part, but some parts you need to adjust a little bit and get rotated into the right orientation. Uh, the other useful tool for attached costume parts is scaling. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for scaling is S, and that brings you up with the uniform scale, which you can then scale your part up and down uh, you can not notice in the tool information, it tells you exactly what the size of it is as you're scaling, as well as the percentage you're scaling it by. Now, let's bring in another costume part. Let's grab the thighs. Let's attach this. And I'm going to rotate this one to get it into the right orientation. And then we're going to shift it around. Maybe rotate it a little bit that way. And now that looks pretty good, but it's it's too long. And now the regular scale, if we shrink it down, it becomes too small. So what we really want to do is do a non-uniform scale. This hasn't been available in other uh, costume tools, uh, but what this allows you to do by right-clicking, scale part, scale on the y-axis, so we can kind of shrink that down so that it really fits on there just right. There, that's perfect. Okay, why don't we take a look at the uh, property grid for the selected part and see what you can change on there. Um, one useful thing is mirror part, which will mirror it to the other limb. As well, you can give it a color. Uh, what I've heard some users do is they'll color code their parts uh, throughout the build so we'll start off with uh, basically a color representing each state of development. So they kind of know if a part's been cut out or if it's been glued. So there's different uses for the colors. Um, okay, so another thing that's useful uh, with the parts is sometimes you'd like to export the model back out 
what this is really useful for is if you're using Armorsmith for 3D printing. So you can bring in a part that you want to 3D print, get it all scaled so that it fits perfectly, and then re-export it back out as an STL, ready for 3D printing. Once you have all your parts attached, you can save this out as a costume file. And what a costume file is, is essentially a collection of all these parts so that uh, you can then reload your costumes or share them with your friends. Now, one last thing I want to show you before I switch over to the workspace tab is this little mode called demo mode. And what the idea for this is, uh, if you're building a costume on, say, Twitch Creative, you could put Armorsmith into this mode and use the green screen as a color key to have a nice, interesting graphic while you're doing your build. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to the Workspace tab. So in here, the camera controls are all the same, except there's also the addition of panning the camera. And you can pan the camera either by using the arrow keys on the keyboard or holding the middle mouse button and dragging around. On the left, uh, we have our 3D model. And on the right are the patterns uh, that represent the unfold of that 3D model. Uh, basically what an unfold is, is uh, taking the 3D model and converting it over to 2D so that you can then uh, cut out these parts on, on paper and reconstruct it in 3D yourself. Okay, why don't we go ahead and go over some of the tools that are available in the workspace mode. So uh, first there's the translate tool. Uh, again, the keyboard shortcut is T. Uh, when you've selected a part, you can then move it around. Uh, you can control click to move multiple parts around. Or you can drag and select to grab a bunch of parts and then move them around. Um, to undo, it's kind of the standard control Z. Uh, the next tool I'll show you is Rotate. The way the Rotate tool works is that you click once to define an anchor point, and then click another point and drag, and it'll rotate around that anchor point. This is really useful um, when rotating the, the, the patterns, because quite often uh, you won't want to rotate from the center. You really want a specific point to rotate around to get it to fit exactly right, because you really want to pack these things tight. Uh, another tool is the Join Cut, uh, which can be activated with J, or by selecting it up here on the toolbar. And what that is, is so that you can split apart your patterns, or join them back together. OK, uh, now I'll go over some of the things that are in the property grid for an unfold pattern. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And I'll zoom in on this guy. Uh, maybe the first thing I'll show you is the Edge ID font size. Because the Edge IDs are kind of small right now. I can't really see them. So I'll double that. And you can see that made the Edge IDs bigger. Uh, the Edge IDs help you to identify where a part connects together. Um, the next one that I'll show you is the edge threshold. And what this does, it'll basically hide uh, edges based on that, that angle. So you can see that it hit a bunch of the edges on the unfolds, basically saying that, hey, I don't really need to, to fold this edge because it's the angle of it is less than the, the threshold. Um, another really useful thing uh, in Armorsmith is registration marks. Uh, I got this idea from YouTube user Evil Ted because uh, he does them on all his patterns. And the idea behind that is that you cut a little notch uh, in the paper pattern and then you mark it on, on the foam so that you have a better idea of 
exactly where the parts need to line up uh, when you're gluing. It's really useful when you have a long stretch, like say, for example, right here, uh, because it can sometimes be tough to get this lined up perfectly. Uh, show edge IDs will show or hide those edge IDs. Edge angle will show you exactly what the angle is um, along a given edge. And what that's useful for is when you're doing a foam build, sometimes you want to bevel the edge, but uh, it might not be clear exactly how much to bevel it. So this gives you a very clear indication of exactly how tight that, that angle needs to be. Show tabs turns the tabs on and off. Uh, this is useful because you don't usually want tabs for a foam build, but they're uh, very much necessary if you're building this out of paper. And then, let's see, uh, tab length just changes the length of the tabs. And finally, object color, uh, I believe, just changes the color of the 3D model. Yeah. The last property is uh, for printing. And this is the paper size. Uh, it's got all the standard paper sizes, and then you can also adjust the margins. Okay, now I want to show you one of Armorsmith's newest features, and that's the ability to create an empty workspace. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create chest. And I'll pop over to the Create 2D. Uh, and this is the tab you use for creating uh, your own patterns um, on a new, new workspace. So you can create lines. Uh, you just click as many points as you need. And then you can either right click to stop making points, or you can click back on the beginning to close that spline. There's also some basic primitives like a rectangle, triangles, and circles. And if you select any of these, uh, they have properties and you can adjust, say, the radius. Or for a triangle, you can adjust the overall size of it. Or for the rectangle, you can adjust the width and height. Okay, and the last tool that I'll show you is image, uh, which is really useful for creating reference images. So for example, you could go in here and you could pull out, say, Batman here. And then you just click and drag to place the image down. And then you could go through and you could trace out the different parts that you want to make to create the different patterns. Okay, so that's kind of it for now. Uh, I'm going to be continuing to develop the 2D tools, uh, adding additional primitives, as well as the ability to edit uh, created splines, because right now, once it's been created, there's not a lot you can do with it. Um, but look in the coming weeks to be able to go in and edit the, the vertices of these, as well as uh, be able to um, do curves. So you'd be able to add a Bezier spline um, and get some nice curvature going uh, around these patterns. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.